Like, I'm I'm by my crib, but we about to walk to the park. Oh, niggas is deep out here for this shit. Yeah, oh, you leave tomorrow? Damn. I, 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 we gonna make that up anyway, bro. Just, just slide to the park, just slide to the park. I remember this guidance counselor once that I had in high school. The time I was self-medicating a lot. It became a daily habit by 15. Uh, I had made a CD and I, I was just handing it out, 100 copies. I gave him one. One day I saw him in the hallway and he said to me, oh, I really like this line. Uh, something like, my mind is out of order, disorder, something. He was saying, and, and I remember being like shocked that he actually even listened to it. I felt like in that CD, that was my manifesto. That was my experience. And even just that he listened to it and was able to recite a line back to me, that was huge, man. I felt like I was being validated, me and what I find important, at least, you know. I would like to think that I've helped these kids half as much as they've helped me. You know, I started interning there, and I was working with maybe about three, four kids would stay after school every day with me. And normally, you know, kids are jetting out. They're out. 2.30, out for the day. Um, and they noticed these kids were staying behind. And it was really just kids I went up to approaching the hallways, and we started talking, hey, I rap, you rap, cool. You know, I would just play some tracks off my phone or, you know, a laptop. We'd start talking hip hop, and then, you know, what started as that would turn into hours, and, and then eventually, transformed into like writing sessions, like, oh, let's all get on a track together, let's all write to this. So, you know, we put on a beat, and we'd all just write each, write a 16 on the spot, write a verse. And I think they started to notice that I think the kids were staying. He was in the same psych hospital. He, when I came out, he told me about it, that he went there before. I was surprised. JC has a lot of shit to relate to. Nah, I can relate to. Where'd you go? All oh, four wins. Oh, I've been there. And he just kind of was like, what? Yeah, yeah, I've been there. You in the adolescent unit, though. That's a lot rougher. I went when I was a little older. Adolescent unit, it's no joke. He's like, yeah, man. It was like we'd known each other for years. Like it just went, it just clicked in the high gear. It was just like we were over that whole barrier, over that whole traditional hierarchy of I'm the therapist, I know better. You're the client, listen to me. You know, it was just like all of a sudden we're on an even playing field. Your boy Ted is on the scene. That was your nigga Ephraim. Ephraim got no bars. No I got bars. I got no bars. No bars. Mad at me, both Nothing. of y'all right now. He got Zero. written Zero. bars that he would lay on a nigga. No, I know. I give Off him that. Little head. Bill, he just a nigga that sit in the studio that watch us exactly. real nigga spit. Exactly. I want to be a DJ. Forget what he's saying. Back to regular scheduled programming. You know, that's me. Knox. Knox Boogie. Feel me? Ephraim over here trying to get the camera. I just stepped in front again. <laughs> Regular shit just came out of court on a hot ass day. I'm about to go home, smoke some weed. I'm tight because my case is back on Sip trial. Some Sip some lean facts, facts for me. I'm about to spit some shit. Those got his biggie cheese. With the G lock on my waist. Fuck with us and you'll get a taste. Uh huh. I run up in your grip with the gun in your holster. Toast your brains out like wheat bread in a toaster. Uh huh. Niggas, I don't play out chair. I always give it up for no fucking fear. Uh -huh. Shooting at niggas is my big career. That's why we call it Mob City, cause we mobbing our chair. Uh -huh. Regular shit. Regular shit. Yeah, Big and Kajona met towards the end of that first year, and they both were just loud, rambunctious. Like, I think all the teachers and all the other staff just like didn't know what to do with them. You know, they were just kind of two of the kids who were just like always doing something to get in trouble, you know? 
I think they walk around with a lot of hurt and a lot of pain, stuff they don't show, and that they've learned to mask and cover because they feel like that vulnerability is a weakness. This is what a man is. A man is stubborn, and he always stick to his ways. You feel me? No, if you, no, it's not. But at the end of the day, that's what carries that, that. That's what makes a man a man. You feel no. me? A man that know how to hold his own and actually stick to what he say he gotta do. You feel me? No. If you can't stick to what you say you're gonna do, then who's gonna rely on you? Outside in the streets, you can't really trust nobody. Like it, it's never it's nonstop. Like Eden was like a. Uh, a, a, yeah, or more, more, more or less like like a cemetery. Mm. Once your soul get there, you're trapped forever. You feel me? And there's like a lot of great people that could have been signed. He's a died or or got strung out on crack, coke. Right? and that's why I, I protect myself like this. Man. Cause I learned from watching everybody there. Like it's it's harsh out there. Like it's real harsh. Brothers attacked, one of them stabbed to death and killed outside a Bronx high school. Today, police say they are speaking to a person of interest. Police say 18-year-old Joshua Acosta died early this morning from stab wounds to his torso. It happened outside Samuel Gomper's high school around 4 p.m. yesterday. Police still investigating the scene today, and yesterday they appear to have fished out two knives from the sewer near here. So far, they say no arrests have been made, but they are questioning a person of interest. Now, both victims had priors. Joshua for jumping a turnstile and Christopher for assault. And word around the street is that this may be gang related. I, f I felt like he was the one kid who really slipped through the cracks. He was almost one of the first kids I was really, I feel, working with and seeing the real potential of this approach or just utilizing hip hop to engage someone, have a, a relationship with someone. Everyone was just in shock. Like, not, not at the idea of death, because that's just regular to a lot of them. Like just the fact that it was him. You know, he was just that really quiet kid. He was never fucking with anybody. And it really raised the stakes for me in the sense of like, this isn't about just about getting kids through high school. This is about saving kids' lives. To this day, I, I sit, his picture right in front of my bed. And like, I sit down and I just sit there and stare like, like, yo, bro, like, I'm going through it. I'm, I'm fucking up, son. Like, I need help, my nigga, like, this shit is, it's like, yo, why, why he had to go so young, son? Like, that shit bothers me, son. Like, man, get off this topic. I'm getting a little teared up and shit. I don't like that. I remember he was smart, too. He knew what he was talking about. He was another one that was too smart for the streets. Like, he needed to go to college for real. I think college would have made him. Word. Before he graduated, niggas had to take his life trying to make himself some money. Pussy stabbed him with a knife. Hitters always want to fight. They think killing niggas is right. How his friends supposed to feel? I know his family feeling tight. Tears running down my face. Looking back, we used to cipher. We used to goof around in class talking about all types of fights. Now my son is really gone. He ain't even coming back. Goofies took his fucking life before he even sold this pack. Dead God bring him back. He ain't even live his life. He ain't even finished school. See his future or his wife. His mother's feeling pain. She can't believe she lost her son. Brother's heart is griefing. Ain't no last Ain't no more fun. Now they feeling incomplete. They lost a brother to these streets. They put the homie Josh to sleep and made his soldiers rest in peace. Some shit like that. That shit had me. I wrote that shit the same day, right after I broke down. It was hard. I felt that shit. Yeah, so the previous year, I'd done a showcase with, with Kelly. You know, we were originally planning on doing it again in March, but based on the circumstances, it just made sense, like, let's do it now. You know, the community needs something now, something cathartic, something to process this grief, you know, something to, um, to just regain a sense of normalcy, just a common purpose to drive for. She's a mover and a shaker. She makes the shit happen. 
if Royce decides it's happening December, it's happening December. You know what I mean? Like, she's a boss. Yo, I wouldn't want to follow them either, to be honest with you. We're just talking about you. Studio Royce has arrived. Right? Let's go get some, uh, let's go get some biggie time. Well, I started ganging from freshman year of high school. Shit, I don't even know why. I was just being a dickhead. I guess I was being a follower, you could say, and got in, I fought to get in. I fought actually my best friend who had beef with, and then we both was blood. I felt like I needed a family, like a second family, meaning somebody else I could go to and, you know, talk to, and it was them. Well, I got four siblings, which is, my, you know, two sisters, one brother, and then I had another brother, but he passed away right in the middle. He was found dead. My mom and dad found him dead on gun hill. It, was, it could have been prevented, but, you know, so we live in now, it's right here. It's times, like, different for me. Like, when it comes to drill music, I have confidence. Cause, but when it, not even, is the way, I don't really like showing people my emotions. Like, me, my soft part, I don't like that. Because I feel like people's going to end up walking over me just because they know that I have soft sides. You know? mm. So, yeah, yeah, so it's like, yeah, it's always like, yo, I'm just going to do my shit. Let niggas know. You know, I have two sides to me, but I can't show them the soft side. I'm tired of facing so many problems. I had to sit back and think how could I solve them. I'm strong hard so I had to do the best of me. Sip on some liquor and just some them distressing me. Life goes on, gotta live it till it lasts. You hand to the future, won't forget about the past. Remember what family used to let me down? They had no faith in me when I felt they would let me down. 17, I had to pick my own self up. No one was there, I had to give my own self love. Dad was acting fucking cheap, it was a struggle. Call you on my head, I'm trapping early, had to hustle. Life goes on, gotta live it till it lasts. I'm heading to the future, won't forget about the past. Remember when family used to let me down? They had no faith in me when I felt they let me drown. I'm tired of facing so many problems. I just sit back. It's just mad, like, I don't want to talk about it. Like... You have no idea Yo. how powerful that is. Like, you have no idea, man. Like, rap's not supposed to make you cry. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Big, that's sick. And, like, the beat is perfect. And I know and he knows your story, so we know where this is coming from. People in the audience who know you enough, and I know you haven't trusted a whole lot of people, they're gonna know where this is coming from. And it can just be left at that. But this is part of your healing, Biggie. This is part of you getting ready to graduate and go on. It's time for you to break with this. Yeah, you're right. You're an artist. Do you believe that? Not really. Can you please? A lot of people tell me that. Okay, so what the hell? You're an artist. You're telling a story that two thirds of the kids in the audience are gonna be able to relate to. I'm tired of facing so many problems. Yo, how you just, that shit was, I ain't fuck with that shit. That was the first, like, she was not even like coming and rapped about that trap shit, none of that. No trap shit, no none of that. Like, no some, no some real shit. Like, let's talk about some real shit. How you really feel? And I feel like she put that to the side and she really expressed how she felt. And that's all that matters, and it came out beautiful. That you know how certain rappers rap deep shit and you could feel it, and then you could tell they feel it themselves. And then with me, it's just like, I'm just saying some deep shit, but it's not like hitting the soul proper. Applying the rope from your highest peak at your lowest, hoping they would notice why you hang hopeless. 
thinking, should I blow this while both hands hold it? Going through the motions, required pills and potions. Wish you was hung, you swore in slow motion, lifted. Wish you never existed, a lot of times listed. Just cause you try to show your feelings that they missed it. Now, in that line, I'm just talking about how I felt depressed or I felt I was in the right state of mind and I try to do it. I basically stab myself. That shit was stupid. The knife broke and shit. It didn't fully go into my chest. Then I was just more upset that I stabbed myself. So I was like, no, fuck this shit. Now I took pills. But it's whatever. I was 14 when I got pregnant. One day she called me in the morning when we was gonna meet up. And she said she was bleeding. She was crying and stuff. I was like, oh shit. She was alive for two, she was alive for two days. And then I stayed in the hospital one night with Lillian and we were just on the bed together chilling and we fell asleep. They woke us up and like, yo, y'all wanna say our last words? I had to pull it together. I didn't want to go. It's like I said my last words so many times. So. Her name was Eliza Rose Weir. Yeah, Eliza. Most of these kids had never done anything like this before. So everybody's sitting there and everybody's like, this thing is going to be a disaster. But for me, I was like, it will not be a disaster. It was just, I don't care what happens, this is happening. You know what I mean? This is not only is going to happen, it's going to be amazing. And even if it's not for how it looks or whatever, it's going to be the sheer fact that these kids are standing up here. They've never been up here before. And they're going to spill their fucking hearts out. They're going to just absolutely gut themselves in front of you guys and you're gonna either be left in tears or left cheering. You're not gonna know how to react, you know, because that's how I feel every day that I speak with these kids and see these kids open up like that. Let me, let me say this to you, all right? I'm getting a little emotional, man, because um, <laughs> those kids performed. They were professional. You know, they weren't key, 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 key. You know, you, you get that sometimes when kid, every person that got up performed as in a professional. That's important, man. They took pride in what they did. They grew. They grew as individuals that night. You know what I mean? The feeling that I got when I saw you in your work, because that's your work, man. That's your work. You and your colleagues there at that program are putting in some real, real valuable work, and it shows. And so I get a, I get a little touch because I was all alone at one point. I felt that way, you know. And now to have you and you're being you're using something in a high school setting, and you're being accepted. I would that was unheard of ten years ago. Get out of here. You want to play rap music with these guys? You crazy? Get out of here. You know? So to see you pull off that celebration in the way that you did, man, it's just, I, I felt I contributed a little bit, you know? So I'm proud of you, man. You. I'm really, really proud of you. Because kids need that shit. You know what I'm saying? They need that, man. Yo. They say death comes in threes when it rains and pours Your head hits your knees and you can't raise from the floor It hurts my chest, man I grieve for the pain in y'all But there's no rest for the weak, so keep staying strong And Josh, 
I can't help but feel I'm at fault If only I had pushed you more I dragged you in out the halls Maybe you would have been with me Instead of out on the street In a studio killing it Living as loud as can be uh, Feels just like yesterday We were ciphering Not knowing your life would end When the knife went in So it was you and stopped Dead in my tracks On that curb in a hurry I almost had it right past and maybe this is my chance to make it up to you Say my piece, show you you're my dude And the love is true, I'm reminding the rest of them Never get too comfortable, death's around the corner Even when you come to school You ain't the first I've lost and won't be the last That's the hardest part of it all, I'm hoping to grasp Cause this is bigger than Josh, it's bigger than us It's bigger than my haven, this is bigger than the Bronx And this, well this is just scratching the surface What really matters is what happens way after the verses After the dirt hits, we pass all the curses We ain't just rapping with Working to master our purpose, to track from the urges to react or self destruct, and he understood that a rapping is helping us. This is the best way we can process our pain. Put our thoughts on paper so they won't haunt us again. Yeah, music is the tongue of the spirit. We speak to that. The honesty you feel on these tracks, no speech for that. Every single one of you deserves a degree for that, and one that goes way beyond just throwing on your thinking cap. But let me bring it back. This is for you, Josh. Been a huge loss, but for you, we're gonna troop on. So rest in peace. Homie, you know I got you forever And ain't nothing and no one is gonna stop this endeavor That's worth that everything